is this is what is next your interactive uh, educative program this afternoon I have the man who is the face of sustainable development goals in this country it has been said that promises made must be promises kept and therefore this afternoon we want to find out from our guests how do we as a people as a relate the promises of the sustainable development goal our guest this afternoon is dr nensa abrapa the director general of ghana this our dear country the national uh, development planning commission doc you are welcome to what is next thank you very much now help my viewers to know a little bit of you who is dr mensa abrampa thank you very much uh, my name could you a same mensa abrampa a same of course named after my grandfather and the uh, mensa and it's interesting um, i happen to be a third male born my father a third male born my grandfather a third male born mm. so i'm three of threes mm. <laughs> so my de my name mensa is, is something that i picked from both of them and uh, i'm a village boy i come from jukwa krobo a typical farming village and uh, from the, uh, the a denture traditional area and uh, the village boy happened to have the privilege of the father being one of the first people who attended school in the village and so was my mother too so they were both teachers and that is how i got out of the village because teachers in those days were transferred from one area to another so i had a vast experience right at my childhood moving from one area to another i stayed at dunkwa we stayed in bebiene we stayed in bogoso we stayed in takwa we stayed in kikam in the western region eventually ending up at kumase so that has been the trend and the vast experience in all these areas at the coastal area at the forest area the mining areas also helped in shaping me in terms of exposure and then through that, I also encountered a lot of people who shaped my life. Some of them priests, some of them teachers, some of them peers that I grew up with. And, and that is it. And two key women who influenced my life was my, my grandmother, who was the queen mother of my village, and then also my mother. Mm -hmm. Because at the time I was growing up, my father was also educating himself as usual, teachers, they went to the university, they went to the travel, they did all these things. So my mother was the one who was even keeping us at bay. And one thing which I wouldn't forget, any time I came to the house, I was going to school or traveling, my mother would always remind me, remember, you are from the village. You are from Jukarakrobu. And you have only one uncle and one grandmother. And this was something that kept me on every day. And eventually, when I went to secondary school also, I, I, I'm a Catholic. I went to a Catholic school, one of the best schools in Ghana anyway, St. John's School, second day. Mm. And, and, and... I hope you are not calling for trouble for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they know it is the best of the West. Mm. <laughs> so, and, and at that place, I met quite very good seniors who became mentors to me. And a lot of them are alive today, and I'm sure some might be watching. Mm. And then also some priests and others who really mentored me throughout the process. When, therefore, I go to the university, I, I, I grew through that. And uh, when I completed the university, I did my national service, surprisingly, as the national coordinator for the International Movement of Catholic Students, which they call in short Pax Romana. And I think that it's through the university which also shaped my life so well. Uh, as a member of the Catholic Youth Association uh, Society, that time uh, YCS, we had the time to, to, to really learn deeply about life, what is the knowledge in terms of the Christian religion and in terms of even life in general. I had the chance always during the vacation to do what they call rural camps. So I had the chance to work in some of the areas which I had not been to in my life, Leati, Wefi, these are all in the Volta region spending you know one month working with rural people building you know schools building churches i remember a very good experience in Yinehini, where we worked there almost for two months helping them to build a school and through that we also engaged in evangelization and others 
eventually i also became the the secretary general for ghana national catholic youth council mm. and that is where i met very good people who really mentored me i may mention in a few names i remember uh, zan who now is working at the, at the Catholic Secretariat in charge of Caritas. Mm -hmm. I, I, I met uh, Ambassador uh, Kanyirega, who also worked at that time, who were the younger ones that they trained, uh, and then also a few of them who, 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 are, who are also uh, late now. I remember Kofi Texan, mm -hmm. Abeku Bruhamond, Yobo Okra, yeah. and, and others. And these are all people who really yeah. mentored but, us but through life. Help us. What are specific values that you pick? You mentioned your grandma, yeah. your mom, yeah. priests, yeah. seniors. Yeah. What are specific values that have shaped your yeah. worldview, your professional life, yeah. that values that you can't just let go? Yeah. One of the things where they taught me, humility. If you want to be endeared to people, you ought to be humble. And yet, you ought to be strong inside. And what, one of the things which my grandmother always told me, truthfulness, mm -hmm. whichever the situation. And he told me in Chi, and that can even take you out of the danger that you are in. So that's one thing which he told me. And then he also told me to always also, as usual, as, as Christians as we are, to be prayerful and know that we are not all in all mm. that there's somebody behind us who will always be supporting us so these are things and tenets which really help me but truthfulness is, is something that these days is very difficult to come around mm. and, and, and about but that is one thing which it taught me thank you now you are the director general yes. of the national development planning commission yes. and also you are in charge of the sustainable development goals help my viewers what is sustainable development goals let me say that this is something which is so dear to our heart and and every Ghanaian must speak about it with emotion why because at the end of the uh, uh, millennium in in 2000 the whole world was looking for what next and then our own venerable son uh, his eminence Kofi Annan came up with the idea of that going to the next generation why can't the whole world come together and have before us setting goals particularly how to help us to eradicate poverty so he said that by the time we go through the turn of this century we shouldn't have poverty and he came out with key seven key goals which helped us to pursue that we pursued that for about 15 years at the end of the 15 years the secretary general then Ban Ki moon did the same assembled all the global heads and said that in going forward, given what we did with the Millennium Development Goals, we should even become more aggressive. We should even expand it to cover certain areas and make sure that poverty is eradicated, but in a sustainable world where there is also peace. Mm. And that is the, the germane of this whole sustainable goals. A big debate, big discussion, uh, and uh, uh, coincidentally, I happened to be working at the UN headquarters at the same time, so I saw all these debates physically. And, and participated in some of them uh, working at the background. And therefore, at the end of it, they came out with 17 key goals, which the whole world is supposed to append to it through the head of states and also work towards it. These 17 goals are supposed to be the basic, that if we haven't attained anything at all, by 2030, we should have attained this. And there are also indicators which are milestones by which we could achieve in order to uh, attain these 17 goals at the end of 2030. So these 17 goals, one, the first one, obviously, is poverty. So you are saying that yes. this country yes. called Ghana, we yes. have committed yes. ourselves exactly to that. the Sustainable Development exactly Goal. That. Exactly now, that. so these are promises for us, for, us. for Ghanaian young people, exactly. everybody. Yes. Would you walk us through the 17 okay. goals so that at least we have some general, my yes. viewers who have general yes. knowledge, knowledge about it. the dreams, the yes. promises yes. that maybe God through United <laughs> Nations and our government yes. have for us? Yeah. This is very important. You see, the 17 goals are in three major categories, a focus on the people, a focus on the planet, and a focus on peace and partnerships. So these are the major areas. Now if you look at the focus on people, what are we craving in our own life to deal without that everybody wishes we don't have in the world, and that is poverty. So poverty is the first goal. 
The first goal is to make sure that by the end of 2030, there is no extreme poverty in the world. And there are measures. If you bring it to our Ghanaian situation, it's the same. We're saying that, yes, we are all living comfortably here in Ghana. But there are people amongst us who are extremely poor. Extremely poor in the sense that there are about, if you have 100 and you select 8% of that, are deemed to be extremely poor. This was very bad in the past. In 1992, they said that 52% of Ghanaians were poor. It has gone all the way down now. It's gone all the way to about 23.4%. So which means that we've done very well to reduce it. But we are saying that by the end of 2030, nobody should say that I am poor. In the sense that everybody should have three square meals a day. Easy access to water. So zero hunger. Purposes. Zero hunger. That people should not go to bed no, without, no, no, without food. food. And that is the second goal. The issue of nutrition and food security. So go to is looking at nutrition. That not just eating food. We have a, an adage in, in, in P. They say, Pintin be I or me. No. Eat good food. That will make you nourish. Eat good food. That will make you grow well. Particularly for children. And it's required for their mental development. So it's not just going to school, but eating well. So that whatever they teach you will be able to imbibe and bring it back to bear in whatever skills and knowledge you have. The third area looks critically at health. Third goal, critically at health. We still have a problem with access to health facilities. We still have a problem to people who give birth and the children die. So a lot of things are around that. We still have issues with problem who do not even have well-being in general. Mm. There are so many diseases which are now we are now encountering, non-common kind of diseases, a lot of that. We see encountering a lot of new areas, new diseases which are coming up and increasing. Cancer, we hear about that every day. We hear about prostate cancer, we hear about breast cancer. These are all things that we need to deal with. And then also, not only that, but even the health facilities and the support for it, the number of doctors, the number of nurses, access to immunization. All these are things that we want to deal with and then reduce the burden of debility, the number of times that you get sick, the burden of having being sick and not having access to medication and then people, doctor to care for you. All these are around the goal three. The goal four looks at education, mm -hmm. the human capacity, the, the capital, the human capital. And this is crucial. We're saying that development cannot be pursued and be sustained if people don't have the knowledge, the skill, and the capability to turn resources for their benefit and the next generation. So this is very important. The use of technology is principal in order to make work easier, to turn it from drudgery into a brain work. And this is very, very important. So many other countries are working towards that. What are we doing as a country? So these are the expressions which we are, we are, going, we are working towards it in the fourth goal in terms of basic education, secondary education, in terms of technology and uh, 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 what is it, uh, uh, vocational education. The number of people who are into tertiary education and making use of these skills. This is very, very important. And not only going to school as it is, but going to school with a quality infrastructure mm. that will enhance and create an environment for you to learn. Mm. The fifth area has to do with gender equality. Right. And this is very, very important. Very, very important in the sense that we have women, we have men, we have children, girls, we have boys, we have people with disability. And all these have different contributions toward development. And therefore, each area has potential and different energy and skills that ought to be improved so that together we can have a real development. We, we, we also look at the issue of equity around this. But there are so many things which, which tend to be quite tilted towards one area. We still have structures within the country, many public structures that if you, you, you sit in a wheelchair, you cannot even make use of that facility. These are all things that we ought to look at. We ought to, we are fortunate that now, parity in terms of education is improving between boys and girls. But if you come to the tertiary education, we still have a lot of work to do. And even the bias. Let me help my viewers here. Yes. Viewers, what Dr. Mensah Brampa is telling us, this is not MPP or NDCCPP <laughs> manifesto. This is United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for everybody. And sometimes 
our, our politicians take us for granted. As Ghana get closer mm. to 2020 elections, mm. our election must become issue based. Mm. And if you're a Ghanaian and you are not sure what the issues are, mm. at least the sustainable development goal must set agenda for all of us. Mm. And that is what we are doing. You just mentioned uh, goal five, but yes. can we go to goal six? Goal six talks about water and sanitation. Mm. This is very, very critical. Because for a lot of the debility, a lot of diseases and other things which come up, they are all water related. And therefore, water is very important. So it's not just having access to water, but having access to safe water, which is important. It's not just having access to you know, sanitary facility, but, but, but the sanitation being safely managed is very, very important. For, 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 for so you are saying sanitation yes. is part of the United States. Exactly. The filth we see exactly. around. Exactly. And that is the biggest challenge. For water, we've done very well. According to the statistics, around 80% of Ghanaians have access to water. Although you may have a place where it is not reliable, a place where you may, it might flow intermittently, but generally about 80%. When it comes to sanitation, we just around 15% who have access to safely managed sanitary facilities, which means that 75% of us do not have good and safely managed sanitary facilities. This, the, the worst case is that if you count five Ghanaians, the statistics show that one of them, the five uses open defecation. Then the seventh? The seventh talks about uh, the use of energy. Let mm. me look at that, mm. whether I'm right. I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, you are. Uh, yes. Affordable uh, and exactly. clean energy. Clean energy. And this is very, very important. Mm. We've had the case. We haven't gone through that where a lot of people use coal and other things. No. But we still have a challenge with firewood. Mm. We still have a challenge with cars which have the fumes coming out and they, they will doze you as soon as you get closer to it. So these are things that we need to look at. Energy usage, electricity that we use, most of that, for now, is coming from thermal sources, which means it's oil or gas. Oil is even better, but the gas, the output is said that, the, 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 the gas is even better, but the oil said that it comes out with fumes, which are carbons, and these carbons, are dangerous these days the last week from monday you'll be surprised the temperature i looked at my car and it was always recorded around 36 mm. degrees 30 35 degrees in accra mm. and these are dangerous because immediately the the, the 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 temperature keeps warming it's affecting almost all the systems around us it's affecting the trees affecting the animals it's affecting the sea it's affecting the rivers and and these come out with unusual weather and climate conditions it rained today which is quite unusual yeah. in accra and this is not just drizzle it's heavy rain in in, in mid-november and it's happening all over. And it's telling us that there's something wrong with the climate. The climate is changing. And we must look at that. And it's all coming from some of these energy sources. Mm. So we need to look at how we can develop. And that's what the world is saying. Mm. We can develop renewable energy. energy. We have abundance of that in terms of solar, in terms of wind. And we need basically just the technology to be able to tap this. But I like, my young people mm. would like go eight. Yes. Decent <laughs> work and economic growth. Exactly. Decent work and economic growth. This go eight is also fantastic, and this is one of which was debated for a long time. I remember in the in the in the headquarters because the definition of decent work. If you define decent work across the world, it means that a work that can pay for your sustenance and that of your dependents. So if you are working and the salary that you earn cannot meet your needs and that of your dependents, then it means that it's a challenge. Dr. Abraham, I can tell you that <laughs> with your definition, many Ghanaians are not having decent work. Definitely, that is a challenge. So that, is, that, is, that implies more work for us to do. More work for us to do. And not only that, but it must be reliable. It must be predictable. That I know at the end of the month, if I'm going to get 2,000 Ghana cities, then I know that this is 2,000 it comes to me. For, for many of us, we are not even able to assess our our, our, our some areas. people are lifelong unemployed. Yes. There are people in Ghana, yes. their whole life, yes. they remain unemployed. Exactly. And these are some of the challenges that we need to turn around. Okay. We need to turn around. And particularly, we can turn around that when we look not only at the employment, not only at the jobs, 
but the skill development so it goes back to touch also the go for which has to do with education mm. because and training and it has to build you so that you can have a decent job and it's a responsibility of every government in the world and that's how the united nations social sustainable development goals says all the things that they appended their signature to it is their responsibility to provide opportunities for you to earn a living mm. a livelihood and 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 therefore it is incumbent upon us to do that as 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 development uh, uh, initiatives. So there we have the nine. Yes. Industry and innovation right. infrastructure. This is fantastic. And whenever I see go nine, it reminds me of the youth, because innovation, we don't lack it in Ghana. They use their minds. They use their hearts. They explore using the phone, using the computer using some of the things that we find around us which we might consider to be waste i see it in my children whenever i have a problem with my phone i call them yeah. whenever i have a problem with my laptop they are the ones that i call they know more than us now how do we tap into this how do we tap into this knowledge this this pattern for innovation in our children and and and, and reflect that in our industrial revolution let me call it that way it's very very important our fortunate thing is that we have resources around us for which we can use and harness for this industrial development and innovation. And not only the resources in terms of physical, but also human. Human. People who can explore. And, and if you go to the rural areas, I remember when we were young, we used to play with clay, mm. we used to play with raffia and make cars and pull it around. And I asked myself today, I was very good in, in using a you know empty tomato thing to create cars and all these things. And I was making you know things for my mother to use to cook and all those things. I asked myself to the where, where are all those ones? Mm. So these talents were not nurtured, they were not explored. And and what can we do for our children today so in that we can harness reducing the quality? Yes. Which we see every day. Yes. The house and the half exactly. lot, yes. north south. <laughs> what do we do? That's go 10. Yes, inequality is a big challenge. We have really reduced poverty. We have developed in terms of growth rates, in terms of the, 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 our lives and the differences in our lives. But the challenge is that if you look at the economic figures, what it's saying is that inequality is increasing. It means the gap between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots, is gradually increasing in Ghana. And this is something that we need to tackle. And that is why massive social interventions are very very necessary to correct some of these things social interventions that will not touch a few but will touch all half in mind free SHS. free shs is one of the biggest attempts and the biggest interventions to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor so that everybody can have education the national health insurance the expansion of it is very very good because that provides everybody practically equal access to a health facility mm -hmm. and also looking at providing the basic resources for agriculture production mm -hmm. because that's where the bulk of our people who are subsistence reside and therefore you can improve that. So what do we get from quality? sustainable cities and communities? Oh this is this is when I worked in the UN this is the goal I worked on. Mm -hmm. Yes. So go eleven is very dear to my heart. I was the technical person for the politicians who were debating on go 11. 11. Yes, and, and many of them were mayors, what we call the chief executives yeah. here. They were the managers of cities, and with the big debate, there were, there were so many meetings that we facilitated with Ghanaians, really participated in this. I remember a lot of time we hosted people for Minister of Works and Housing, local government at such meetings. And therefore, we must see it in the way our cities develop. It's one area which, when I consider it, 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 it makes me sad in a way. Because up to now, our cities are being developed in a haphazard mm. manner. We don't plan for cemeteries. This is it. We don't plan for markets. Exactly. And some of our chiefs have been exactly. selling exactly. cemeteries. Exactly. Exactly. So you exactly. ask yourself, exactly. what this kind of it. cities are we, are we creating? Those is it. Those of us who have had the opportunity to fly, in, in, in about five years ago, when you are flying over Accra, you see during the rainy season, you see ponds yeah. from the sky. And you could count a number of them. What I've observed is that when you fly these, the number of ponds are reducing. Mm -hmm. And these ponds were deliberate water collection points from the plant. So when it rains, 
the water from the built up areas drains and goes to collect in these ponds and eventually they evaporate. Mm. These days, the ponds have been filled with concrete and are being used. Mm. So when it rains, the water do not have any place to go. And then it runs all over and there are floods. And then they begin to blame planets. But the point is that cities must be managed. As for planners who blame them, because <laughs> they are selling their lands and they are giving the permits. But responsible <laughs> consumption and production. This is very, Can we very be responsible important. when it comes to consumption? This is very if I have food important. to eat, I must continue eating. This, this is the challenge. Mm -hmm. That we eat what will give us healthy and, and health and energy for us to continue with our lives. But not in excess. If you, be, you eat in excess, it becomes a problem. But the challenge here is the consumption in excess. Things that you don't do, but mm. you just have it. Mm. People leave their conditions mm. on in their houses mm. at the time they are not there. The culture of frustration of a light mm. when you leave a room. These are little, little things which reduces consumption. Because the energy that you have on, you are also depriving another person for not having it. Mm. So all that that gold is seeking is that whatever you don't need, please store it leave it for another person also to do to use it and this is a challenge we had between the the the, the, the developed and the developing countries mm. the developed are over consuming necessarily using things which are not which are which might not be required and then in doing that you are depriving those of us down here of things we still have a situation now where there are boats plying our 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 sea and catching fish as much as they can and taking it away and with that, you know, the competition they've created is that our fishermen, who are using only these small boats, who used to go and get a fish, now they go and they get nothing because of the unnecessary competition and, and, and consumption. And you'll be surprised that when they cut the fish, they select. And the rest which are not used, which might be needed by my grandfather, mother and my grandchildren, uh, you know, my grandfather at the village, they throw it into the sea to get rot. Get you one day. I think we need part two of the sustainable development goal. Yes. But these are issues that should not be politicized. Not at all. But now at these all. issues have yeah. been politicized when it comes to national development. You see, the challenge here is that national development doesn't know any political party. It goes beyond it. And therefore, when there's a plan, it's a national plan. It's initiated, yes, by a government. But immediately it goes beyond approval of parliament. It becomes a national plan. Everybody must be committed to it. So it is for the Sustainable Development Goals. You'll be surprised that in the debate and the signing of the Sustainable Development Goals, it was signed by the previous president. Yes. Yes. President Mahama. His Excellency John yeah. Mahama. Yeah. And when John Mahama finished signing, it became a national document. And therefore, when His Excellency Enrico Fadi took over, it becomes his own. And the, the additional part is that there are two co-chairs in the whole world mm. who are to help facilitate the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. And His Excellency Nanayoko Fuadu was selected as one of the co-chairpersons, two of them, in addition to the President of Sweden, the Prime Minister of Sweden. So the two of them co-chair the United Nations Sustainable Development High-Level Political no, Forum. Dr. Rampa, you are telling me that <laughs> our president yes. Uh, so pretendant this issue that all is, over the world is issues about zero hunger oh, zero yes, yes. And, and we are here yes, and, yes. And, and if anybody should benefit from yes. the sustainable it development is. goal and it is must be Ghana it but I don't see it in terms of awareness how many Ghanaian people know that these wonderful 17 goals are that there are promises yes. for us yes. and our children yes. in terms of awareness yes. creation talk to my viewers how do you assess it? This is, this, is, this is one of the things that we've been doing. You see, it's not just mentioning sustainable development goals, but we have gone to the next level, that our own, the vision of the president has been expressed in such a way that it is aligned with the sustainable development goals. And there's a constitutional requirement. When you elect a president in Ghana, the president has to come out with a vision, which we call the Coordinated Program for Economic and Social Development Policy. And it is this vision which has been aligned to sustainable development goals, which has been expressed in a medium-term development plan. The medium-term development plan then is expressed into strategies and plans by the various ministries and the district assemblies, the metropolitan uh, municipal, municipal and district assemblies. So the, all the pursuit 
by the district assemblies, metropolitan assemblies, municipal assemblies, and then also the ministries are in response to the sustainable development goals. So if these institutions, which we have, what we call the implementation hands, whatever they are pursuing, is going to fulfill these sustainable goals. And therefore, as much as the president is accounting for what he has done for the country, he is at the same time accounting what he has done in response to the sustainable development goals to the world. And this is the way we've gone about it. So in order to, to, to make sure that it is not just a government pursuit, we have what we call the Implementation Coordinating uh, 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 Committee which is made up of the people from the public sector, that's the ministries and the district assemblies, and also representative from the private sector, the public, uh, private enterprises, uh, foundation, federation, and then also some of the representative of the various chambers. And then we also have the civil society group, which, which form the caucus, the civil society caucus for the, in support of sustainable development goals. And the three meet, Mm -hmm. And Brampa, you are talking about people <laughs> like you. Um, how can ordinary young yeah. people on our street yes. who are selling yes. dog chains yes. know that there's a promise, yes. agenda for them that yes. they will have decent work? Well, how can people in you are talking about your village? Yes. I'm talking also about my <laughs> village. Know that zero mm -hmm. hunger. hunger that a day is coming and that our president has committed himself yeah, to the world. that Ghanaian people like yes. other people all yes. over the world yes. should not go to bed without food, not just filling their beds, yes. but so don't talk about the high profile people <laughs> like you but it. I'm thinking about our rural people, it. you I are talking it. about gender I equality, that I our it. women, that their husbands pass away and they drive them yeah. away yeah. there's hope for them, how will they know the sustainable development goal so let's leave the top top people <laughs> you are talking about, but I'm so talking let, about let, my let, village. Me, let me put it this way, yes, how do they are the districts, yes. which is the, the basic the lowest point of, of planning authority and the development management at the district it is the responsibility of the district planning officer and his team what we call the district coordinating director and his or her team to go out and disseminate and what we have done is that we've had the chance of going all the way to the district and and launching the dissemination process with them some of them have done it through FM discussion some of them have done it through what we call the the town hall meetings, and some of them have also done it through their daily visit to the communities. And this is ongoing. Let me say that this started just uh, four years ago, but the dissemination exercise in, 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 its, in, its, in its fullness started just about two years ago, and this is still ongoing. So the sustainable development goals, as much as we talk about our medium-term plan and our district plans, we are also at the same time talking about the sustainable development goal. Because our district plans and, and are nothing Look but an at expression. It. Talk to my people. <laughs> you are the director general. Yes, yes. National Development Planning Commission. Yes. Are you satisfied yes. about level of awareness when it comes to sustainable development? Not quite. We, our evaluation indicates that we still need to do more in terms of reaching out to, 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 to the public on the sustainable development goals to go further. But we have a lot of institutions that have gone through this process to support with the dissemination. To the stand that we are engaging even schools and we are organizing a lot of competitions among these young people to be able to respond to some of the things that are required from the, from, by the Sustainable Development Goal. But we'll go on. We have in mind setting up what we call an innovation center in some of the districts, some of the regions. We have in mind also setting up what we call the I, I, uh, SDG platforms for discussions and all these things, particularly involving, uh, uh, let me say that the, the Christian and the Muslim community and religious communities in general, as core part in this discussion. We've had a chance to be with some of the traditional leaders, but I think they should go on the more. They should go and are, are you sure these sustainable development goals are attainable? I just just idealistic, uh, you know, dreams. Or are they attainable? You are in charge. Are you are you convinced we're on the right direction? We will get there. You see, this is the conviction, and I'm very very confident we can really get there. We are in a better situation. This is not just a commitment of Ghana; it's a commitment globally. And Ghana, with the indicators that we have expressed 
in our own plans, we're definitely going to get there. Because if they talk about parity in terms of education, we are almost there in terms of the secondary level. And definitely in the tertiary level, we are not that far. Because are there, are there platforms for partnership yeah. that people can oh, now yes. join? Not yes. the high level yes. that you exactly. started mentioning, exactly. but that in the exactly. district, in the yes. communities, yes. Yes. religious, faith-based yes. organizations yes. can all come on board exactly. and, and get us exactly. there. This is, this is what, what are, are they? What are the platforms for partnership? Yes. These, are, these are some of the things that we have, we have, be, we have initiated recently. With the, with, the, with, the, with the private sector, for instance, we have the partnership, the private sector support for SDG, which has been created. It's not just at the national level, but even at the local level. If you want to invest, if you want to start some of the activities related to SDG, these are the groups that you can join. So much as we are harnessing it at the national level, we're pushing it down to the... To the, to the I just to want the you to look straight into yes, this yes, and invite people yes, yes. to become partners yes, of, of, of the implementation so of... So this is the so biggest straight, opportunity. Talk to Ghanaians yes, and Ghanians. everybody yes. that we must accelerate yes. this promise. Yes. This is something, a big opportunity open to us as people of Ghana, and this is something that we need to pursue globally. For us, on our part, we have identified key goals that we must attain by 2030, and we must all come up, our district, our communities. And the little things that we are doing with respect to say, sanitation is contributing to goal six. And you should always bear in mind that way. The little things that we are contributing in creating the little jobs is also contributing to decent jobs. So these are crucial ones. At the local level, we are now organizing civil societies. It's pushing. They are organizing themselves. Please join. We are pushing together church groups, and there are so many people who are initiating processes like that. We are pleading that we pull together some of these energies and form these groups so that we can pursue this, religious groups all over, particularly in areas where it might be difficult for people in Accra or the national level to jump to. In Ghana, we have the decentralized system through the ministry, through the regions, through the district, through the assembly man, through the unit committees. These are the areas where development manifests. And we want everyone to have in mind that the world has decided there should be no poverty, that everybody should have access to clean health facilities. Everybody should have access to education. Everybody should, at the end of the day, should have access to clean water and sanitation. Everybody particularly should have access to decent job which can provide livelihood for you and your family. And we are inviting all of you to join us, the National Development Planning Commission and the other institutions that are involved in this process so that we can pursue this. At the end of the day, our president is the co-chair and we have a dual responsibility as Ghanaians to reach and attain this in our country and also as an honor to our president, do it the more because he is mobilizing the whole people of the world to attain this. In fact, this is one area that both NDC and MPP yes. should be able to partner yes. and move us because exactly. President, former President Mahama Sign. has been there before yes. and our current president. Yes. So this is an area yes. that we should not fail. Yes. Viewers, I'm in conversation with the Director General of National Development Planning Commission, our dear brother, Dr. Uh, Mensa Abrampa. And he is telling us that where we have reached as a nation, the sustainable development goals must be a dream, not on paper, but a dream that is everybody's dream. A dream that we must rally everybody around and make sure we get there for our people today and our people who are yet even to be born. Let's be part of this dream. But recently, the United Nations, especially UNFPA, organized a summit in Nairobi. Is that Nairobi summit related? Is there any connection between the Sustainable Development Goal and the ICPD 25 uh, Nairobi summit? Yes, let me say that's so much related. You know, 25 years ago, there have been a lot of issues related to population. They've had a lot of meetings. But 25 years ago, it, it really represented a landmark, a landmark where population was shifted just, by, just from issues related to family planning and reproductive health to, to embrace development. So the International Conference for Population Development May in, in, in Cairo became a point where this became a new refocus 
for development. So 10 major agenda was adopted at that time. Eventually, when the sustainable development goals were developed, it was also aligned and linked. So you realize that there is a whole interface between the International Conference for Population Development uh, 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 Program of Action and also the Sustainable Development Goals. So it is not just the, the, the Nairobi meeting recently. It wasn't just a talk about reproductive health but it was a talk about development and the role of reproductive health in facilitating this process. Now, you led Ghana's delegation to this uh, all-important summit. Yes. What were some of the outcomes yes. that all of us yes. must seriously yes. uh, uh, consider? What came out yes. of the Nairobi summit? Let me say that three major things which the world adopted, that nobody, no woman, should die because the person is giving birth. This is crucial. We've had a lot of that. You'll be surprised when you look at the figures in, in Ghana. What happens is that... Now tell us the figures. Yes. For 100,000 births, 100,000 births, at least 300 of them, women who go through that birth, die. And this is not a good... This thing. country? Yes. And that is 300 out of yes. 1,000 thousand, Ghanaian 100, women. 100,000 100, giving birth. birth die. Which means that, you know, if, if we should have birth spread over the year, there will be only six days where there wouldn't be a woman dying as a result of giving birth. And this is dangerous. This is something that we have to stop. So one of the things where they came up, by 2030, Nobody should go through that. By 2030, everybody should have safe birth. And in addition to that, one of the things which they came up with that, that anybody who wanted to have access to reproductive health should have access to it without any impediment. And therefore, nobody should be prevented. And nobody should in any way be constrained from having access to it. So if a woman is pregnant and they want a scan, they should be able to walk to a facility which can provide a scan to know where the child lies and whether there's a problem, provide for it. If the child, if the woman needs any f medication to be able to survive, they should do that. And particularly when they are giving birth, they should be in a facility. Again, there are also problems related to, you know, uh, 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 women. And the sad thing, if I use women, it will be and, and the mind, so let me use both. That people go through uh, sexual threats and 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 this is something which is dangerous women men beating their wives men you know threatening their wives and and the gender based gender violence. Based violence. And gender based violence and sometimes we think only about men beating yes, their, 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 their wives also also but you are saying that, that, that the women that also beat that, that, that is so. the normal thing and then also female gen genital mutilation mm. which is something that we talked about we spoke about over there all these things should be a thing of the past by 2030 it should be a thing of the past by 2030. And then not only that, but also there are other things which are related to the state, especially the, the mortality rate of children. It's not only the women dying, but also children dying at birth. And this is also sad. You'll be surprised that all these also have a lot of implications for development. Mm -hmm. Having go through nine months of pregnancy, you go to bed, you go and give birth, you might survive, but the child might die. And these are little things that we can prevent because the child, through the pregnancy, the woman did not have access to medication or did not give birth in the, in the medical facility and all these things are implicated. Or they might be in such a way that the, the, the person is giving birth and there's an emergency. They will require an ambulance to take the person from there to the health facility for cesarean and there is no such facility. If you happen to be in my village, it's, it's, it's seven kilometers from the nearest third road. And the road is so Please, bad. Your village is better. <laughs> You've mentioned the name of my, your village, but there are people are going through a lot. Some yes. are using this yes. aboboya. Exactly. In fact, there are the pregnant time. women yes. who they use motorbike, yes. one in front, yes. one at the back, exactly. and pregnant women Man, sitting in the middle. Sitting in the middle. Yes. These are these are serious. In this country, yes. You these know, are, these are serious challenges, and therefore there must be a process by that through this through this 
meeting and the resources that it's able to harness will prevent some of these things. One of the areas which is also looked at is mobilizing resources mm -hmm. to respond to some of these issues related to health and related to reproductive health. This is very, very important because if you put in resources, you prevent it from happening. The other one is crucial for me as a planner, and that is harnessing a big word, demographic, demographic dividend, mm -hmm. a big expression. But all that we are saying is that we have a lot of people who are within the ages of, of, of 17 to 45, which, which is considered to be youthful. This is the time that they've developed their brains. They need to exert it through skills, through turning, uh, undertaking decent work, as we talked about, which is a coincidence between them and, the, and the, that and, the, and, the, and, and, and goal, uh, I think, eight. Of the of the of the ten of the uh, uh, sustainable development goals, and what we are saying is that the youth presents an opportunity for us. It's a big opportunity for this country, which means that they have to go through training, acquire skills, and be capable of of using these skills and knowledge to develop this country. If you deny them of that, they become a liability, and that is something what we do. Yes. The young people are really uh, relevant to us. Yes. Only when we are in election and we need people for rallies and we pack them. You know, after election, seriously, our politicians forget about them. Yeah. <laughs> but what about the issue about child marriage? Child marriage, yes, that's one thing. This is, this is something we used to be, you know, a story in the past. But this is real. Children who should have been developing and going to school at that time, 13 years, 12 years, are betrothed and say, sent into marriage. There are so many things about it. Physically, the human person has not developed to the point of you know, engaging in adult, adult, ad, ad, adult uh, activities. So when you do that, it results in so many things. One of the things which is so pathetic in, in, in many cases which affects women, what we call fistula. And, and the result of that, the cause of that, has to relate to younger people, you know, engaging in, in some of these uh, sexual activities. How do we prevent that? This is something which we spoke about vehemently in, in Nairobi. To the extent that we are also giving ourselves a commitment as a country mm -hmm. that by 2030, this should be something of the past. That we will not experience all those, you know, child marriages in Ghana. Which means that it is not just, you know, a government work. It's a work of the traditional leaders, a work of religious leaders, a work of, of, of the youth themselves, becoming, you know, peer facilitators of this process. And it is through this that we can reduce that. Let it not happen to you, but prevent it from also happening to your friend. And this is very crucial. But that is where we will yes. need a partnership again. You see? Yeah. We, 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 we need health, quality health yes. delivery. But there are, there are cultural and religious yes. practices yes. that are frustrating, yes. Yes. that are restrictive, yes. Yes. that will not let a, a pregnant woman yes. receive blood. Yes. There are such yes. cultural practices that religious people yes. and traditional leaders. Yes. But when it comes to resource mobilization and spread, yeah. Your monies are with government institutions, Ministry of Health, yeah. and normally these faith-based organizations and others, if they'll get resources to help, they must go to other donor yeah. agencies, yeah. but not to Ghana government. Is there a body that deliberately now is partnering with cultural faith to, to work against the restrictions and the frustration that religious uh, uh, people and traditional yeah. leaders, child marriages are all cultural things. How do we enter into the partnership? Yeah. Can we sign a memorandum of understanding religious leaders solve this problem? Yeah. Traditional leaders, yeah. let these things be a thing on the path. Or we look up to you alone. <laughs> no, not at all. Because this is where I think the sustainable development process becomes crucial. Because one of the things we're trying to do is to mobilize resources outside the orthodox process to support this from the private sector, from committed people and individuals. And when we're able to mobilize it, it becomes an addition. But it becomes also flexible for us to initiate some of these partnerships to tackle some of these unusual processes which can bring us good results. How do we bring the religious bodies, the traditional leaders, to tackle some of these belief systems, some of these cultural systems? Very, very important. Dr. Abramba, yes. moving forward yeah. today, 
on my program yes. what is next yes. i want to commit myself yes to zero percent yes. preventable maternal mortality, mortality in Ghana. Am I thinking right? You that think in this country, we right. preventable yes. maternal mortality, yes. the percentage yes. must be zero. Yes. Am I thinking right? You would think very right. We share the same thing with you if you look at the, the medium term plan and the government vision. But it doesn't take just one person. It takes all of us to make that commitment. And I will encourage particularly the youth Given the discussions that we've had, what are you committing yourself to? So far as the sustainable development goals are concerned, and so far as the International Conference on the Population and Development uh, Plan of Action. My producers are telling me that we are time is up, but yes. look straight into the camera yes. and give me your last word to my viewers. What's your last word? My last word is that, particularly for me, I'm looking at the youths. You are not the owners of the world in the future, but you are the owners now. Let's tackle it. Let's develop ourselves so that we can share with our friends and colleagues those knowledge and then and then the, and then also the skills that we are we are acquiring so that we can tackle this together. The private sector we're counting on you for resources. It's not just the government, it's you that we are counting on. The leaders, religious leaders, traditional chiefs, we need to really take off some of these constraints to make our, our our youth our women very very free so that they can equally enjoy life as we have viewers this is what is next your interactive uh, educative program seeking relevant answers to contemporary challenges confronting us as a nation. And today, my guest has been Dr. Mensa Abrampa. Now, if this country does not develop, it's one of the people we must <laughs> hold accountable. He is the Director General of National Development Planning Commission, and he has shared with us the Sustainable Development Goals. These are non-partisan. These are United Nations goals, dreams, promises that our former president, uh, uh, His Excellency, uh, uh, Mahama and our current president, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa, all over the world have committed themselves. They are co chair. If nobody benefits from the sustainable development goal, we must benefit. And he is telling us from the Nairobi summit that no Ghanaian woman should die at the point of death. And I have committed myself today to zero percent of prevent preventable maternal mortality. I invite you to be part of this campaign. Childbirth is a blessing. Ghanaian women should not die in the effort of giving us babies, giving us human beings. We will come your way next week, same time. This is what is next on GTV, the authentic and authoritative voice of Ghana. God bless our homeland Ghana and make this country great and strong.